Welcome to News Talk with Simone Ivani at the International News Channel. Following up on yesterday's show, today we continue to talk about the upcoming global conference, Dismantling Global Hindutva. Those organizing the conference are saying they are invested in examining the Hindutva ideology that propagates hate, promotes Islamophobia, and seeks to reduce the myriad practices of Hinduism to a singular notion of a Hindu motherland. But those arguing against the conference say it will do nothing more than lead to Hindu phobia. The South Asian Scholar Activist Collective, in an attempt to debunk the idea, has described the term Hindu phobia as a distraction. In the West, to silence critiques of casteism, Islamophobia, sexism, anti-Semitism, racism, and other forms of supremacist ideologies at the heart of Hindutva. The three-day conference is set to host a variety of speakers from various academic and professional backgrounds. While some speakers are named publicly, many are staying anonymous in fear for their lives. I wonder why? The organizers are also saying that the attacks on the events are full of distortions and lies designed to make a conference critiquing a supremacist ideology into one attacking the Hindu faith. To discuss this controversial conference, we are joined today by Ram Subramanian and Gaurav Sharma. Thank you for agreeing to speak to me, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. I guess my first question to you guys would be, what does Hindutva mean to you? Hindutva, the root of the word, comes from two separate terms, Hindu and Tattva, which makes it Hindutva which means the essence of Hinduism, which means the identity of a Hindu, which means the collection of all the tenets and principles of Hinduism. Mm -hmm. The term Hindutva is the Tva at the end, when added to a word, makes a, a meaning of the word that constitutes the essence of Mahatva, Gurutva, mm -hmm. Astitva, likewise Hindutva. Hindutva is our core, our identity, and our existence. That's what Hindutva means to the more than a billion Hindus across the world. No, absolutely well said. How are you, uh, <clears throat> How I see Hindutva means being Hindu. That is my ide identity. Uh, it means that I need to follow my dharma. Mm. That is the essence of uh, Hinduism, of Hindu culture and tradition. Now, in a nutshell, uh, you know this is what uh, this is how I would define Hindutva. Now, the organizers of this uh, conference, they are trying to deliberately create a divide between Hinduism and Hindutva. So anybody who is not confirming to their ideology or their understanding of Hindu customs and tradition, you know, is, is a bigot. Mm. So that is where the problem starts. Mm. That's, that's how I would, you know, that would be my starting comment on this. No, that's fantastic. So I guess then moving on, what was your reaction when you guys heard about the conference itself? That this is happening? It's very shocking. But before we go there, just to reiterate what Gaurav just yeah. said. The organizers have twisted the meaning of Hindutva mm -hmm. to suit their agenda. Yeah. And this message must, must go out there. The reason why this is bothersome is because, as Gaurav just mentioned, they are saying that people, that Hindus who do not conform to this twisted version of Hindutva must be dismantled. Mm. So coming to your question, yeah. the very word dismantling global Hindutva, dismantling, it's very shocking. Um, my first reaction uh, to this when I heard about this conference was I was not at all shocked. Uh, wow. I, I, I think I, I was not shocked because I, the moment I got to know about this conference, mm -hmm. uh, I knew that anti-Hindu uh, forces have joined hands uh, in their nefarious uh, agenda and their only objective is to throw muck at uh, Hindus and Hindu customs and mm -hmm. traditions. 
Now, if we look at when this, uh, the chronology of events in the past two, three weeks, you see uh, Taliban has taken over, um, you know, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. There are, there are, there are absolutely no religious minorities left in that country, in that God forsaken country. Yeah. And here comes a narrative which says that you don't have to worry about Taliban, you don't have to wor worry about ISIS. Right now you have to dismantle Hindutva. Hindutva. So that entire psychology of creating a separate narrative of, or a mm -hmm. different narrative to shift, uh, to shift the focus of the entire world in a different direction is the main objective of this conference. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was looking at the events which were happening around us. I mean, we are in a global village now. Mm -hmm. And I was not at all shocked. The only thing which is shocking right now is the the universities are promoting and they are propagating and they are supporting this, uh, you know, anti-Hindu conference. Mm. That's my only, you know, uh, concern. concern. No, fair enough. Um, I guess I kind of want to agree with both of you at some point. But going back to what you said about how the conference and those organizers have changed the definition of Hindutva to suit their agenda. So in a letter on the conference's official website, Hindutva is described as an authoritarian political ideology that historically drew inspiration from Nazi Germany and Mussolini's Italy. So I know we kind of heard about what you think about that, but if you were to compare it to something like Hitler or Mussolini, what do you think about that? I, would, I will come to that yeah. question in a moment. But uh, I want you to know that Gaurav and I concur on on the response to Hindutva. Mm. It's shocking that they would use Hindutva as a pretext, as a distractionary measure to the events that are unfolding in another part of the world. Yeah. So this itself tells you the underlying agenda. Yeah. Uh, coming to your question now, this was about uh, what the organizers say, mm -hmm. what they think of Hindutva. The very use of the term political is evident the angle from which these people are coming. Mm -hmm. They are using Hindutva as a pretext to launch attacks that align with their vested political agenda and narrow ideology. Mm. I would like to add here one more thing. Now you look at the uh, the events, right? So the the essentially speaking you know the it's the it's a common world view right now that us has debacled uh, in afghanistan uh, and this conference uh, is trying to portray a different image to the world mm. now now you said that you know they are trying to um, compare the uh, compare the, the term hindutva with uh, hitler or you know mussolini yeah mussolini they have been doing that this is not the first time if you look uh, and and you you know you do uh, you you study the uh, old um, uh, journals and uh, history, they have created a divide uh, by saying that I, I'll just use a simple example. They used so the term swastika for mm -hmm. Hitler's Hakenkreuz. Why did they do do yeah. that? Because they they somehow wanted to relate everything to Hindutva, mm. whereas essentially. Uh, no, but you know, uh, at, at no place in the Hitler's uh, scriptures or, or books, he has talked about uh, swastika. He has always said that this is. I mean, they were used using it as a hooked, you know, hooked cross. Mm -hmm. So this, this, um, this, in this uh, attempt to intentionally uh, associate Hindutva with mm. uh, Hitler's ideology or Mussolini or uh, you know extremist ideologies is absolutely absurd mm -hmm. it's they are just they, they are absolutely agenda driven yeah there's, there's no connection between both these ideologies yeah so coming back or like taking a step back a bit how do you think that these kind of conferences affect young hindus or their minds or their mindset about hindutva that being children infants or even young adults for that matter they're it's natural that there will be a perceptible fear about the impression such kind of uh, uh, agenda will have 
on Hindu minds, especially when it's sponsored by universities in our own cities where our Hindu children uh, go for studies or are employed or are alumni. Uh, we are engineers, doctors, PhDs, employees of mm -hmm. the uh, university. So uh, we tend to think that this will have an impression on impressionable minds uh, of children. Yeah. But I have a, a, an optimistic uh, and very strongly convinced uh, view on this, which is this is not going to affect Hindus. Okay. We are steeped in our, our faith. Yeah. We learn faith at home. We have institutions that teach us faith. What is disturbing is the influence such Hindu phobic hate mongering conferences have on the rest of the population that is very worrisome. Mm. How such Hindu phobic events instigate others to hate, discriminate and even harm yeah. Hindus in the Canadian society mm. is worrisome yeah. and that's why this has to be firmly dealt with. No, absolutely. Uh, I, would, uh, I would partially disagree with Rambai here. Of course. Uh, what what I, I see is that this conference would have dire consequences on young minds studying at the universities. They would be ridiculed, they would be made fun of in their friend circle if they, if they do not confirm to their professors I, you know, idea of Hindutva. Uh, they they would not be able to wear their insignia. Mm. They're not able to uh, carry their you know uh, their their customs uh, on their sleeves. Uh, they're not able to participate. If they try to do that, they would be you know that they, they might have some consequences. Uh, let's say they're they are part of South Asian studies and they disagree with what what is being taught. There is not a common dialogue. There is no dialogue actually. It's a one-way traffic. So this is going to impact the young minds and uh, it, it not, not only uh, is limited to that fact, the families, the siblings, the immediate uh, you know, uh, people around that person also get impacted. Yeah. So this conference will have a long term impact yeah. on the students because you are pressurizing the student to confirming to something which he is not, he or she is, uh, you know, not not aligned with. Yeah. So uh, I think this would have uh, very, very dire consequences. And I think that is the reason uh, the promotion of this uh, conference by the universities should be stopped. Mm -hmm. We don't care. Number of individuals can talk about Hindutva. They can have their own definition. But all we, all, all we want is that the universities should, you know, take a step back and uh, do not uh, get officially involved in this conference. Yeah. It is being a Hindu, it is a Hindutva in our Canadian people, mm -hmm. our Canadian students in our universities that urges them to wear a sari, a salwar kurti, mm. have a bindi and wear a dhoti mm. or a kurta. Yeah. We as a Canadian society, we accept when girls wear hijab. Yeah. They are a part of our society. Absolutely. Imagine if somebody is going to take aim at Hindutva, how are they going to deal with people that are wearing sarees and such Hindutva garb, Hindutva dress mm. to the institutions? Yeah. In fact, I would go ahead and call this as um, intellectual terrorism or oh. intellectual genocide where I'm not allowed to wear my identity. Correct. Uh, you, you are making Hindus uh, who are ashamed of their own identity, customs and culture yeah. and tradition. So this is, this is where the, uh, you know, the problem lies. Mm. So you guys are talking about what you think will be the consequences of this. What are 
problems or challenges that the Hindu community faces as of today? The, according to you. The, the challenge is a direct threat to the Hindus. And that is very imminent. It's critical. It's alarming. Mm. It's criminal. And we must face it. Mm. Why? It puts the Hindu public in Canada directly at physical risk. It poses harm to them. Mm. It instigates violence and hate towards them. That is the immediate concern of the Hindu society here in Canada. Yeah. I want to begin uh, answering this question by asking a question here, right? Yeah. How many ma how many mainstream media channels have covered this story? Absolutely none. None that I know. Right. Uh, their narrative is very strong. They want to, whenever Hindus are usually in a problem as a community, nobody's talking about that. Mm, I mean, I've, I, I don't know of any uh, mainstream uh, news website or um, media channel talking about it, whether it's in the US or in Canada. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are concerns within this community. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about this, but uh, there's no one to listen to that. Uh, our history is being projected as mythology, as it did. It never it happened. Never happened. Yeah. Uh, in the universities, uh, our gods are made fun of. Our uh, idols are. I mean, and this is happening when our idols are broken. Our temples are vandalized in uh, in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. None. I mean, no, uh, no, no media is talking about it. Why? Mm. So and, and we are living in a in a diverse community. We are living mm. in in the first world, and we are living in Canada. I think uh, as a community, we can we should expect that um, somebody addresses these issues. Mm. So there are many challenges which yeah. Hindus face at this this uh, moment yeah. in Canada. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we agree that it is a very biased conference. So do you think that these kind of biased conferences kind of add additional fuel to challenges that the Hindu community already faces, but also in how they are trying to kind of spread hate towards Hindus? So this is certainly an attempt to spread hate against mm -hmm. Hindus. There is mm -hmm. no question about it. Mm -hmm. But look at the statistics on hate crime. Yeah. Over the past couple of years, hate crime has only been increasing yeah. in Canada. Yeah. So, under these circumstances, is it required to have a conference that promotes hate and violence? Mm. That aside, as a pluralistic multicultural society, Canada is founded on inclusion, on diversity, as Gaurav was mentioning. Yeah. Absolutely. This conference flies in the face of those very principles that we stand on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it's, I isn't it um, questionable that the universities are using the taxpayer money to, uh, to, uh, to propagate uh, an agenda which mm. is, um, which is anti-Hindu, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, Hindu community in Canada as well as US and I think everywhere. They are, w you know, one of the peaceful communities. There are, you won't, almost negligible yeah. uh, in, in crime. We are li in, like uh, Rambai said, uh, we are everywhere. We are in the, um, you know, you'll find in us in politics, mm. medicine, and uh, you would find it's information yeah. technologies, media. Correct. Everywhere. Everywhere. Social Everywhere. service. Social service. There's no sector charity. that a Hindu hasn't touched. No. Hasn't touched. Absolutely. However, uh, we are using the taxpayer money to propagate uh, hate against us. What's the reason behind that? Yeah. Show me one, one, one singular incident where a Hindu in the US or Canada 
has committed a crime driven by faith. Yeah. Show me one instance. Yeah. If you cannot, you will have to justify why you are conducting this event. Yeah. No. And no, why? Why? Our own universities are sponsoring this yeah. event. Yeah, no. I, I kind of want to talk to the audience a bit too that Hindus have a proven track record of being the most ideal citizens in any country. Here at home, they have the highest educational degrees, biggest businesses, and close to no criminal cases. So despite all this success, why do you think that Hindus are unable to speak up against all kinds of Hindu phobia within the academics or even within the community for that matter? I do not think that is a fair statement. Okay. Hindu students, Hindu students councils mm -hmm. have voiced their concerns okay. and they are not happy about what is happening. There yeah. are many interviews out there. Mm -hmm. So the Hindu students in unison with the society mm -hmm. are up and against these Hindu phobic events. Without a question, Hindu students are opposed to this. Okay. So then I guess, in, do you agree? So uh, <clears throat> my take on this is that um, the Hindu students and you know, uh, for, for this, just, just for this uh, conference as well, mm -hmm. it's not the first time this is happening. Mm. Uh, maybe because of social media and uh, you know, um, and, and other media channels, we are getting these reports and you know, you see uh, uh, kind of an uprising in within the Hindu community. But that has been the case uh, I think for the last uh, at least two to three decades, we mm -hmm. can say that. Mm -hmm. And hence, I would, I would, I would think that there is a, there is an, uh, there's an important need to talk about this topic of Hindu phobia. Mm. Uh, I remember that I think it was a couple of weeks back when I spoke uh, at your channel, and I said that we need to have a national summit on Hindu phobia. Correct. Uh, this conference and many conferences, I, I'm sure this would not end at, at this one, yeah. would institutionalize the Hindu hatred within academia. Mm. Uh, the, the young minds would definitely get impacted. You are legitimizing the, uh, the, the perspective of only one section of academia who is known to have uh, a anti-Hindu uh, stance ever since have they have been in the in their existence? Mm. So definitely, um, there is a need to speak about it mm -hmm. more and more. Yeah. And we need to talk. You know, I think it's time we take this to a next level. Mm. We we go to our political class as well. Yeah, yeah. I guess then my question also would be that if you think that. Well, you 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 want to say that everyone is voicing their concerns. Why do you think they're not being heard then? So, the first thing what, that we must recognize is Hindu phobia has always been there. Mm. It's been simmering. There has been and uh, things happening mm. under the covers, attacks on Hindus, bullying Hindus. These things have been going on for a mm. while. But this seems to be the first effort brazenly, openly being conducted with the help of universities mm. that tends to dismantle Hindutva. Yeah. It comes with a very dangerous title. Yeah, it does. Right? So, it is time for us to voice our concerns now mm. and we will be heard. There isn't a question about it. There are people, There, there is leadership that's spoken in support of us. There are our law agencies mm. that will stand beside us. They have assured us that they will not allow any harm to come to us. Mm. So it's not like our voice is not being heard. But I will tell you one thing. I'm a diehard optimist about Sanatana Dharma. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to things, I, I look forward to with hope the one thing that this conference has done is just what you're saying now. It has risen a giant that did not think it was necessary no. to act in a concerted manner. Yeah. This is our opportunity to stand up as one force, yeah. flex our muscles 
and show them that if you raise up against us, we will kick ass. Yeah. I think the Hindi term for that is hum kisi se kab nahi. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I hear you guys. Um, so coming to the academic part of this whole situation, I know a lot of universities are organizers. So if you could change something about the current higher education system that is teaching, or part of the South Asian department at least, that is teaching about Hinduism, what is it that you would change? What would you want students to be learning? People who are not already Hindus to be learning about Hinduism. Would you like to take that? <laughs> okay, sure. Um, and then I will ask. No, it. please, yeah. I think uh, the learning not begins at the university level. Mm -hmm. We need to go at the school level. At uh, you know, I, I give you an example. Yeah. Uh, I think I got an uh, got a report from Alberta that uh, Hinduism is being taught uh, at grade five level, okay. whereas uh, Islam. Christianity, Judaism, and Sikhism is being uh, taught to children starting grade two. So this is one of our concerns. Why, oh. uh, why are we not talking? You know, why can't we take this to the uh, to the basic level, yeah. like from the beginning? Yeah. And it is not o only going to be a question of, uh, uh, you know, just going to the school level. This is going to be a big project. Mm what to teach to those kids mm. and uh, you know of course we would like I mean uh, generally speaking I, I'm, I might not be the expert on that but I would say teach about Bhagavad Gita mm. uh, remove Aryan invasion theory mm. which is uh, which is which ki gives kind of um, uh, support to the fact that Aryans were some some other race and they invaded uh, you know the the Indian subcontinent, and then they uh, it kind of uh, puts a stamp on the invasion by the Mughals and uh, British mm. Britishers uh, later on. I would like to do you know get rid of that. Mm. Talk about the Indian uh, uh, sages, this old scientists. Talk about Ayurveda. Talk about uh, uh, plastic surgeon. The first plastic surgeon of the world was um, Sushruta. So mm. things like that could be included in the uh, in the curriculum right from the beginning at school. Mm. Now, at the of course at the South Asian studies in the universities, this would take a bigger uh, role. We will will talk about the history of India, what has been the con contribution of mm. the Hindu community right. to the world. Yeah. We'll talk about you know n other than the fact that you know the zero was invented by but, yeah. by Aryabhat. Yeah, we have to go back. Uh, and talk about all those things, yeah. and that is, and, and all the myths which are roaming around uh, in the academia and media about Hindus. That I think, and that is why I say I, I I press on that point that we need to have a national summit of on Hindu phobia. Mm. Uh, recently, I think the government of Canada they they issued uh, you know hundreds of thousands of dollars for uh, fighting Islamophobia in school. Yeah. Right. Which is fair enough. Fair enough. But we need our own uh, set of funds to, you know, educate people on Hinduism as well. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Ram? This is a very important question you asked, so yeah. you're going to give me three minutes. No, please. <laughs> the first thing we need to understand, a very basic thing is, Christianity has the Bible. Hmm. One book. One book. And Islam has? The Quran. The Holy Quran. Yes. Hindus have, have six major schools of philosophy. We have a lot. Absolutely. We have one school of philosophy that believes in duality, yes. another school that believes in non duality. Yep. And everything works well it within works. our system. Yeah. Here is what is happening. Hinduism being a free religion, we will not issue a fatwa on somebody that tries to interpret Hinduism and goes wrong. Yeah. What that has led to is every person, every school of South Asian studies seems to install its own so-called expert that brings her or his own interpretation of the dharma. So in the higher studies level, we need to make sure 
that we engage with authentic established institutions to deliver the right interpretation of the dharma yeah not just to hindus to even non hindus yes what does that entail it entails engaging with institutions like ramakrishna mission like divine life society yeah like chinmaya mission mm -hmm. these are the missions that are trained they have they are authentic and they can guide our uh, schools of higher studies mm. at an elementary level we are doing something that is of significance in the canadian society and it is going to have an effect for time immemorial mm. we have established a canadian federal not for profit called the canada hindu schools which will soon become a registered charity mm -hmm. we will teach provincial and territorial curriculum just like the catholic school board is doing just like our provincial school boards are doing canada hindu schools will also teach sanatana dharma to children from day 1 they will start learning sanskrit wow and they will learn the bhagavad gita they will learn the ramayana they will learn the scriptures and when these canadian children come out of grade 12 they will be gold minted canadian students graduates imbibing sanatan dharma values ready to serve canada and the canadian communities that sounds like an amazing thing to accomplish that would have that would actually be very helpful in establishing a lot of things you both are saying to do speaking of those who are teaching hinduism now do you guys think that there is a possibility that non hindus are taking over these departments and because of that they are portraying hindu and hinduism in a negative light we do not discriminate between hindus and non hindus okay. for us all of us are one okay nobody is a non hindu for us okay so there's no question of of uh, teaching something to non hindus okay but as i said the interpretation has to be right yes be it being received by a hindu or non hindu mm -hmm. the right interpretation must be delivered okay okay no that's absolutely fair enough i have to actually really kind of agree with you there <laughs> <laughs> i would like to uh, add here one point that um, at the university and uh, the school level what and and when we are trying to build a curriculum which which uh, which caters to the need of the hindu community as such i would say the concept of outsider and insider needs to be understood okay an insider an insider is somebody who understand like rambai said who understand the tenets of hinduism in the right you know spirit. in the right spirit mm -hmm. however anybody this i mean i can have a hindu name and i could uh, you know blast my own religion and uh, culture yeah. so that doesn't make me a hindu right uh so that concept needs to be understood it's i mean we have fantastic writers uh in india and in the west as well yeah. who who are despite having a different religion uh you know write so fantastic things about uh, hindu community and culture mm. uh historically speaking we can talk about will durant he wrote about uh, the, uh, the about india and what a fantastic book he has written on um, on india yeah. and its culture and then uh, in the in today's date we have uh, dr frolly we have uh, professor uh, gotier mm. and, and yeah, many sure. more professors like you know who are in the west who have been trying to uh, you know address the uh, the hindu culture in the right way and they they are trying to even they are fighting their own battles in their own way uh, yeah. in in their own way yeah for the hindus so yeah. it really doesn't matter who is sitting over there what matters is what ideology he has towards the uh, towards the religion uh, i no, i just i just would yeah. like to add one yeah. thing we are using the term hindu so often in this interview yeah. it becomes very important to understand that we are sanatana dharma mm -hmm. that's the name yeah, right gaurav bhai sanatana dharma the term means ancient faith yes we been there since the beginning of time the beginning. for tens of thousands of years yeah. 
when the religion was established, mm. there wasn't a boundary. Mm -hmm. When the religion was established, there was no other religion, there was no other faith. Yeah. So, we are steeped in thinking that there is no other. Mm. There is nothing called other, it's mm. just one. Yeah. We are all one, no matter what faith, color, creed, origin you are, nationality, you may think you are, we are one. Yeah. So according to that then, do you guys think that we need more Hindu-based scholars who are indigenous to Hindu thoughts, teachings, philosophy and scriptures to teach Hinduism? Uh, a person that I have great love and respect for uh, located in the North Coast, uh, I'm sorry, in the, in the, in the West Coast is uh, Sri Jeffrey Armstrong. Yeah, you just mentioned him. Mr. Right. Jeffrey Armstrong. Right. Uh, is he indigenous? He's, he's, he's us. Yeah, he's one of us, yes. He's one of us. So, uh, you don't have to be born Hindu. Mm. He's a Hindu. He's a Hindu more Sanatana Dharmic than anybody else. Fair enough. Anybody, as Gaurav Bhai said, has undergone rigorous training, has understood our Vedas, our Upanishads, and like Sri Jeffrey Armstrong, who has not only steeped himself in Advaita, he can also speak about Dvaita. Mm. He can speak about Sankhya. Maybe better we than need, I probably. We need yeah. people who know the religion yeah. inside out yeah. and who have some kind of an authority to speak mm. about it. Not everybody that goes around saying, hey, I can deliver a lecture on Bhagavad Gita. Mm. They don't have to be Hindus. Right. Well, I absolutely love that ideology as well. Yeah. You are, I, 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 correct, uh, let me correct you. There's nothing called you don't have to be a Hindu. We are all one. We are all, We're if you ask me, it's one. We are all one. Right? That is right. Gaurav Bhai, you agree with this? Yeah, the absolutely. Entire yeah. Philosophy? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. No, no, it's an absolutely beautiful philosophy to, I think, follow. And I feel like people should understand that. Correct. Thank in, you. In terms of this conference, too, for that matter. But bringing things a bit closer to home, I know that University of Toronto is an active contributing sponsor to this conference. And we were speaking about this, that you tried to contact them. Have you had any luck whatsoever? Yes. I wrote an email to the uh, president of Toronto University, uh, Mr. Gertler, mm -hmm. and uh, I received a response uh, more than seven days after I sent the email. And the response uh, says, even though we acknowledge the impact that this conference is going to have, we agree with the fears that you have, we are still going to go ahead and sponsor this event because we have to allow critical dialogue. We promote critical dialogue, hence this sponsorship will not only go on, many members of our staff are mm. actively participating in this conference. I have written back to them saying critical dialogue ends where my freedom begins. Mm. Critical dialogue becomes dangerous when it threatens my very existence. I have also engaged, I have given them another opportunity to convene their leadership and withdraw their support. But I would like to be forthright, we have already engaged law enforcement. The University of Toronto is our university. Yeah. It's in our society. Yeah. We have a sense of belonging and we still, we still hope that sense will prevail on the authorities and they will withdraw their sponsorship in a timely manner. Else, we will take all the steps that are available to us constitutionally to put up an opposition to this. It is not just the University of Toronto, Mark you. The McMaster University and York University and University of Toronto at Mississauga are all contributors to this conference. Mm. It is very alarming, it is very disappointing and these institutions have let us, let us down. 
<coughs> I I think this is laughable actually. <laughs> the reason okay. this is laughable is that we would be commemorating the 20th anniversary of 9/11 twin tower attacks. That's correct. Where over 2,900 lives were gone. That's correct. They were killed by religious fanatics, and we would be talking about dismantling Hindutva. Hindutva. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I don't know in what sanity uh, would these people be when they would be talking about dismantling, destroying Hindutva. Yeah. So I think uh, this hate conference against the Hindus uh, show their hypocrisy and their, uh, they, it shows that they are two-faced. Uh, the way they have destroyed the First Nations in the US and Canada in the, uh, in the history, they are planning to do the same to this uh, pagan culture which we have. I think this is that that is the reason uh, I would say that the University of Toronto had this been some individuals talking about it we would have just let it go they do it all the time it's not the first time but the University of Toronto and other universities who are sp you know which are sponsoring mm. this event that is the troubling part yeah. why are you using our money to sponsor yeah. hate against ourselves yeah. why why should I pay the tax to so that my, my children tomorrow goes to the university and learn to hate their own culture. Yeah. I have told the University of Toronto what Hindutva means to Hindus. Mm. I have told them that Hindutva is an inalienable part of a Hindu. Mm. You cannot have a Hindu without Hindutva. Yeah. So how can you sponsor an event that dismantles Hindutva? I have also appointed them to an online survey which within a few days has gathered more than 38,000 signatures. If this is not a fathomable indication mm. of the angst in the Hindu community, yeah. how else can you measure? What scale do you need to measure the magnitude of the anger in the community? Yeah. In that case then, do you think that these kind of conferences, or even this conference in particular, is sowing the seeds of Hindophobia and hatred against Hindus in Western community? And if so, how do you think Hindus should propose to fight or challenge these? So, Gaurav Bhai, you want to go? Or then I maybe think uh, the straight answer to this is yes. Yes. Uh, not all students who study at the universities are Hindus. Yes. Uh, anybody who is learning uh, Hinduism or Hindutva through this conference is going to have doubts and is going to have um, is, is going to question the belief systems of Hindus so I think yes definitely it sows uh, and in fact it, it's it's a grown tree now rather uh, of Hindu phobia and Hindu hatred uh, how are we going to protest about it? Uh, I think Hindu Forum Canada has already written uh, to the universities, mm -hmm. and uh, Rambai's association also have yes. uh, written to, to the to the universities. It is disheartening that uh, they are still going ahead with the conference. Uh, we are going to have a protest uh, at uh, at the King Circle uh, on September second. Mm -hmm. and uh, we are going you know we will take it to the next level and uh, we'll will as per the constitution whatever of canada whatever is available to us we would utilize all those resources to uh, to persuade universities and register our protest against this uh, hateful conference you mm -hmm. asked a two part question yes the first was do you think this will impact hinduism do you think it will sow seeds of doubt against in Hinduism. Yeah, against Hinduism. Sanatana Dharma has been since time immemor immemorial. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do anything to Hinduism. Okay. We are here to stay. The Dharma will be here beyond the universe. Okay. So, will it do anything to sow seeds or impact Hinduism? No way. That's not okay. my concern. Are we concerned that 
some hate mongers out there are conducting a conference. Yes. No, that is not a concern because we believe that haters will be consumed by their own hate. They will go to peril. What concerns us is our institution sponsoring them. Mm. And as Gaurav Bhai said, I still hope the institution will uh, pull back its support to the conference, mm -hmm. but you will see concerted action from us on the ground. I want to highlight what Gaurav Bhai said. There will be a protest on the 20s, on the 2nd of September, less than 48 hours from now at 27 King's College Circle in the heart of the University of Toronto in Toronto. There will be a concerted protest. Mm -hmm. Canadians will stand up against an attack on their faith. We are asking through the medium of this channel, yeah. through your support, Absolutely. Thank you for having us here. No, thank you for All viewers, us. all viewers that are Canadian, that believe that a Canadian's faith should not be attacked, mm -hmm. should join us at this protest and stand side by side with us. Say no to Hindu phobia. Say no to Hindu hate in our own institutions. Well, you heard it from the gentlemen themselves about the protest, and we will have the information up somewhere on our website as well. Um, are there any final thoughts you guys would like to share with our viewers? Something that I may have missed. We are Canadians. Inclusion and diversity is our foundation. It runs in our blood. This conference flies in the face of those principles. Mm -hmm. As Canadians, it's our duty to stand up against such hate. Be it Hindu phobia or any faith phobia, we will fail if we do not stand together and oppose mm. this. We cannot allow our own institutions to support this. Before I, I say my last word, I would like to emphasize the protest yes, is please. on Thursday, 2nd September at 3 p.m., at 27 King's College Circle. It's been called by Hindu Forum uh, Canada. It's been supported by many organizations. The following organizations have already given their support to Hindu Forum Canada and will stand beside them. It's Canada Hindu Schools, Canada Hindu Registry, Mokshwar Hindu Cremation Services, and North American Hindu Association. We are looking forward to seeing you actively standing out there and supporting us on that day. Thank you. Uh, my final uh, thoughts on this would be, I urge the political class of this country to look at the concerns which the Hindu community faces right now in Canada. Uh, I know you are all busy in your elections, but I think there is something uh, hateful going on in this Canadian society, and uh, I would request you to uh, you know to look into this issue as well I also would like to request the civil society and like Rambai said that anyone who thinks that hate should not be propagated cannot be tolerated in this Canadian diverse and multi multiculturalism uh, multicultural society they should join us in our protest and join uh, hands with us in, in, in our endeavor to fight against this uh, hateful conference. Lastly, I would ask my Hindu brothers and sisters to stay strong. This is not the first conference. Correct. This won't be the last one. We have survived ages and we would survive ages. Uh, this hate would go on, but we would continue to fo follow our dharma. That's our dharma. We are Hindus. Let's show them what it means to be a Hindu. We are Hindus and we stay stronger. That was beautifully put. Gaurav Ramji, I want to thank you guys for joining me. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having thoughts. us. Thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you for having us. And thank you to our viewers at home for tuning in. This is Simone Ivani and you're watching the International News Channel on Tag TV. 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest news.